Welcome back or welcome to Hound Lane. Today's Hound Lane presentation is about a strategy that I use a lot of the times because I find it absolutely efficient and really fair to our dogs. It's called a counter cue, also known as a counter command. And I think of it as an elegant solution for getting unstuck when things are not going as planned or well with our dogs. We're not on the same page. So a little bit about history of the counter cue. It began with the training of marine mammals. And if you think about it, marine mammals could be very dangerous. They're really, really big. And if they get frustrated, um, it could turn out to be very bad for the trainer. So you need to come up with strategies that you are getting to do what you need to do with that animal. And I'm talking here about animals in captivity but, and not get maimed or killed. So we want to continue working with the animal, not against the animal. So the counter cue is a way to achieve this. So a lot of the times what happens with these animals in captivity they need to have procedures done, such as medical procedures, let's say draw blood or something like that, that the animal is not necessarily interested in partaking. So we can use the counter cue or counter command to help the animal become more cooperative with something that we need to get done. So if we go back to dogs, we have in the world of dog trainer, taken from that example of working with sea animals or marine mammals and incorporated it into our own training. So basically works the same way. So you ask a behavior of your dog. It doesn't really matter what behavior that is. And your dog fails to engage in that behavior. And the question is now what? How do we move forward so that our dog is still a participant in our training session and we get to our goals? Now, does it matter why the dog is not performing? Is your dog being stubborn or dominant? And I frankly doubt this is the case. Does your dog lack the motivation for what you're asking or presenting? And I would say this is very typical. A lot of the times dogs, just like any other animal, wants to know what's in it for them. So in other words, it's as if your dog is asking, show me the money. I will do X if you show me what's in there for me. Absolutely normal, something that sometimes we fail to see as normal in our dogs. We want them to be almost like little robots that have absolutely no emotion or self-interest. And that is not only unfair, but I think pretty sad. The other reason could be that your dog is actually unable to perform. So say, for example, is your dog afraid of a situation? Is your dog very, very distracted with what's, ha what's happening in the environment? Or is your dog in pain? I do a lot of fitness conditioning with my own dogs and I have been very mindful of knowing, is this something that my dog can perform or not? Because again, it is not very cool or fair to be asking of something when our dogs can't really perform. So does it matter? Yes and no. Yes, because I want to take my dog's well-being into consideration. Why is it that you cannot or won't do X, Y, and Z? And no, because there are other ways that we can get around it. And this is where my elegant solution comes in place. So this elegant solution of counter <clears throat> cue allows us to assess the emotional state of the animal. What is going on? It also allows us to move forward with our training or behavioral goals, which is the first reason we're there. It does not damage the trust or the bond that we have with our dogs. And it's also kind to the dog. I want to work with a dog that is a full participant versus pushing my weight around or coercing the dog in any way. That's just what I believe is best. And it's also a very efficient way of working and getting results. So not because we're kind, it means that we're going to let go of our results or our goals uh, for that training session. So how to use the counter cue? 
you would ask your dog for the desired behavior. And again, it could be something super simple, so just sit at the door or something a lot more complex. You would allow your dog to process the request. Give it a couple of seconds to take in what you're asking versus repeating yourself over and over. Nobody likes to be harassed that way. If your dog is able, not able to comply, you would try to determine the emotional state of the dog. As I explained, is your dog overwhelmed, distracted, unable, or just doesn't feel like it? And I would argue that is a reasonable thing for your dog to say, show me the money. Then if you're in that um, situation where it's, as I call the battle of the species, you will give your dog a counter cue for a well-rehearsed and enjoyable behavior. So if your dog is not sitting in my very simple example, when you ask them to before going out the front door, you might ask your dog for a nose touch if your dog has learned that and enjoys giving you a nose touch. Or maybe you throw the ball for your dog behind your dog. The dog goes, gets the ball and then sit and then you can go out the door. You will reinforce the behavior that you put in place of your initial behavior. And that could be by um, giving your dog something to eat or just telling the dog good, what a good boy he is. Whatever it is that you find at the moment that could be reinforcing for your dog. And then you ask for that initial behavior. And you will see that your dog will perform the initial requested behavior with such a high rate of not only proficiency, but um, it's something that you will see happening over and over again. So next time, instead of you getting into an impasse with your dog because you want it to do something and your dog is not performing, think about a counter cue. My suggestion also is for you to have a few behaviors that your dog really likes to do and has learned really well so you can draw from them when you see yourself in an impasse with your dog. I hope this helps. Take care. Thank you.